I'm going to speed it up and it's really dragging. Uh, try not to. I could feel your urgency to, to read it, to get through it, more than, than to hear the words. I mean, I could, I could hear what you were saying, too, but I, I thought it was just a little bit fast. Okay. And not all the way through, either, just but like, probably toward the center of it. John? One thing I noticed is a couple of places there where we broke the sense unit and stuff. Mm -hmm. I'm being a little tighter on this now. Uh, we're a little choppy on the sense units of the, of the sentence. And just be careful to make sure that you follow the complete <coughs> thought, even if you're doing it slowly, which is okay, to not put a pause in, in the middle of the sense unit. And then starting to come against the choppy. So keep the sense unit flowing. And then pick a pause at the end of that sense unit. I think it's integrating the homily with the proclamation. Yeah. What I mean by that is, I was anxious to get to my homily. Yeah. I was like, okay, no pressure. <laughs> let's just get through this so I can get to my homily. Yeah. <laughs> and I think that's really a bad attitude because some people will get a lot more out of the proclamation than any homily given. Yeah. Yeah. So I need to keep that in mind. As, as Father um, Steve Tillman said, you know, it's important to read the homily no, I'm sorry, the different last year's class, the class I had, um, when we were talking about the length of, of readings and choosing ma uh, music and all that, he said, what he would tell, when people complain about, you know, the, the, um, the length of the homily as opposed to the reading, trying to get that across to the priests, you know, he, would, he said, I would gently ask them, Father, what is more important, the Word of God or yours? Yeah. <laughs> oh. so. uh, Frank, you had I, I was just going to agree with what, before you said what you just said about anticipating the online, I was thinking that. And in a way, the easy part of what we're doing here, about claiming and doing the online, should be the proclamation of the same because we're anxious about the homily and we're, we're letting our anticipation of the homily interfere with the easy part of what our job is right now. You know? Easy but more important. Easy but more important. Anyone else? He had two points, which was the Bible story and the fish. And unless I missed it, we never got to the fish. Yeah. <laughs> which is good because it would have been too much. <laughs> so yeah. no, I, I, I lost the part on the fish. Um, ah. It was here, but I, I forgot about it. You can tell us now. That was good, though. <laughs> you did. Well, actually, about the fish, I was going to hold up the fish and says, you know, what Jesus is telling us in this is we're not to hook fish, mm. we're to get people hooked. Uh, to get people hooked on Jesus. Uh, that, was, that was my finish, and I, it was in the notes, but I just said, <laughs> <laughs> I was, I was going to introduce Diana to the God. But basically, that was the story, hooked on Jesus. Wow. And Jesus. <laughs> I need to say this, but when you start talking about an onion, I thought of Shrek and Donkey. 
sentence or actually five word phrase of what can you guess what the theme was? What was what was the theme? To get involved in the parish. Ministry. Yeah. Well, maybe that's not the exact word. But no, it's, but it's something it's like that. It was like the universal call to ministry. It was all our our what I was trying to get across. Yeah. Yeah. I got baptized. Okay. How many people are baptized? How many people then come to That was really good because we got people were involved. But I was very impressed with your enthusiasm of walking out. <coughs> you know, if, if anybody was ready to take a nap, they couldn't. You know, because you were coming That's out. why the gospel was read so fast, because I was like up there reading. It's like, I want to get out there. I want to get out there. <laughs> <laughs> no, but if, you know, if you're sitting there going, okay, now it's time for my little snooze, um, you couldn't have done it. what you're going to talk about the fish <laughs> because I already had something in my mind and I was um, uh, talking on a break time to Ike and Sherry that um, the fish is like a symbolize that they always leave their eyes open even when they're asleep so as a spiritual person you always like stay awake always be aware and awake so like in, in Korea when you go to temple there is a fish hanging in the temple, uh, the roof, it reminds all the, the monks that they need to stay awake. And uh, one of our um, St. Paul publisher in our country, the, they make all these uh, spiritual books, their symbol is the fish, like stay awake. So I, I was like uh, trying to see if he, you're going to say something about that. <laughs> It's like, stay away. That would make another good home. <laughs> <laughs> Bring out the fish and yeah. stay away. Yeah. And I'll, I'll use this. <laughs> you can borrow my fish. <laughs> <laughs> it's a pillow, actually. Okay. Um, it's a pillow. Ray, Mike, and Ren. Okay. Uh, I like Joe when he comes into the uh, uh, preaching because he's so dynamic. I forgot to critique him. I got too, uh, involved already in what he's talking about. And content-wise, I like the way he challenged the listener to be proactive with the gospel. So that's what really uh, very uh, interesting to me. A lot of it's already been covered. Uh, I also was kind of left dangling with the fish, like, what's he going to talk about? <laughs> but what I like, especially uh, how you went prior to today's gospel and kind of give a, a brief yeah. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. thing about what happened before that to make us understand a little bit better what today's gospel is about mm -hmm. and you know what the call is and all that. I really like that. That was that was really good the way you did that. Mm -hmm. You know, you didn't really go like real deep into it, just here's what they talked about before, here's mm -hmm. what happened before. Mm -hmm. Now this is what we're talking about today, but it all kind of like flowed and tied in together. I thought that was pretty good. But like so you left me hanging so once the fish coming in, <laughs> come back next Sunday, Mike. <laughs> 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 you come back. It was just a ploy. <laughs> 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 it was just a ploy. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Oh, I like Diane's ending when she said, uh, what kind of follower are oh, yeah. you? I thought we she said, uh, are you going to remain in the manger or go all the way to Calvary? Mm -hmm. It's a very nice you know, question. Like The strong part for, for me, I'm just jealous when you got into mentioning volunteers, because I've had that same conversation about ministers that aren't volunteers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but yeah. you call them the recruits. That really got, that's, a, that's a strong word. But, you, mm -hmm. know, but it, you know, it says there's an obligation there that, that, that you, you know, you should do it in the back of the major group. You know, that you have an obligation to do this. <laughs> I'm going to use this next ministry Sunday. Oh, yes, I felt the same, Ray. Uh, it's very dynamic. Uh, and also, I listen to easy understanding to me. But uh, only a little bit fast to me. So, <laughs> in this law, So, that's it. How does he get an idea that you start first and then? Turn to Diane. That was that was very nice. Did you say how you do in your parish? Some of no. the deacons. We were never told. Never seen it done this oh, way before. Really? We were told that we were by told. Chuck and Marge, I think. Mm -hmm. Chuck and Marge told us. Somewhere along, <coughs> yeah, they <coughs> told that that uh, sometimes I parishes will have good. I think that's good. I think that's good. That the deacon couple will actually. Yeah, <coughs> right. We thought mm -hmm. we'd try it. Mm -hmm. and because sometimes there is a, like a woman's point of view. And the way you explain about like, how your children leave and how you fell and all of this, it's it's different when man is explaining, and so it's like a, like a feminine view and you know it's it's really nice like, together. So I think that's actually when I read hers, what I told her is I said, you know what, mine's very intellectual. It's mm -hmm. analytical. Like mm -hmm. there's mm -hmm. baptism, mm -hmm. recruit, mm -hmm. and I said mm -hmm. yours mm -hmm. touches the heart. Right. Mine's up here, right. mine's down here. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because hers is much we, more. We wrote separately, totally, mm -hmm. until when did you read mine yesterday morning? Yeah, I read Friday it. morning was the first time you read mine. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they, they worked all together. Of course, I couldn't read his because <coughs> he did it spontaneously. But, you know, he gave me pointers enough of it. Um, but he did well, deliver it. You know, uh, uh, this is a, a kind of a little trick. I ended up not using it, but it gave me great comfort. Yeah, I had this, <laughs> so that, but I didn't, I didn't look at it, obviously, otherwise I would have yeah. the fish, but, but, you know, so it wasn't really spontaneous. Uh -huh. I made notes, but uh, I never really used it, but it, it just made me feel comfortable yes. enough to come out here. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, mm -hmm. I would have felt like, what if I forget something? I thought, like, what if I forget? I'll just say, well, you know, looking at the map. <laughs> but people couldn't see it, I think. <laughs> It looked very professional <laughs> with the Bible. I'm like, oh, okay, that priest is studying priest. <laughs> yeah. I just wanted to say that I was challenged by uh, what you had to say, Joe, too, about uh, recruits instead of volunteers, and also that it's all with me, uh, because I think too many times, you know, we, we don't ask people to help us. You know, and people are, a lot of people in our parishes, we find out later on, are just they're just kind of there waiting to be asked. And, and yeah, we get our no's from people because they can't, they've got children or whatever the reason is. And it makes us afraid to ask again, but the challenge is to keep asking and to realize that uh, we are all recruits, we're not volunteers. Anyone else? Okay. I the two together it flowed good. Mm -hmm. She picked up and I mean, I know she's used to cleaning up after Joe, but <laughs> it, it went well. It flowed together. They complemented yeah. each other. The was transition great. was really nice. Mm -hmm. Are we going to talk about Diane too? Yes. Okay. I'm going to finish Joe first. Joe. Okay. John, did you want to say anything? No, I'll wait till about that. Okay. Yeah, I thought it was. The same point that Mike made is a good way of explaining um, you know, the gospel, you know, the readings before and after. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Talk okay. a little bit about, I mean, I really people to, uh, I 
think it asks people to look at the reading before and after the gospel. Mm -hmm. If you're going to do that, remember how that all groups stay forget who told us that that's what we should do. Mm -hmm. Not just take that out, but read before and after and see what the big, bigger picture is. That's your bill. It was, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay, what about Diane? I, I, uh, <laughs> what you said at the end really hit me hard about whether we're just going to be a part of the Christmas celebration or we're going to follow Jesus all the way to the cross. And um, that's, that's what I'm left with is the basic challenge of, you know, how real is this? How seriously do you take what you say you mean? <coughs> and I really appreciated that. And it wasn't done in a way that, that was confrontational at all. It was just a way of, you know, we left on the floor like this. It was an invitation. Yeah. I don't think that was good. Mm -hmm. Sure. I like the questions that you asked about um, being honest and um, life if you get too much change and um, not being in your impact and, and stuff like that. Because that's every day with experience stuff. But I think that um, it's more of a call, instead of a call to ministry and sign up for something, I think it's more of a call to live the life that Jesus called us to by our baptism. You know, that, um, and it's in such an everyday, down-to-earth way that we're really called to live that way, but we forget about those little things and we think they don't count. Mm -hmm. But, you know, they pile up. But I thought it was very good, very challenging, and something to ponder. You're right though. So my example weren't on point with what I was trying the point I was trying to make was just like called a holiness rhythm. Really. Mm -hmm. Called to, to discipleship. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you're right. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Anyone else? So uh, I like the uh, you know when you discuss the uh, discipleship is equated to sacrifice. Mm -hmm. And that is very true. Like all the things that we do. It's not really easy, especially in this time, we are very counter and cultural. Mm -hmm. Where, you know, it's really hard to tell that no, that's not the way it is. And that's where we are. Mm -hmm. And then when you touch upon, okay, the, our kids leaving, and then at the same time leaving, and there's some, that is a lot of fun. It's for both parents. And but again, when I'm looking at that meditation, that is what we're all about. We follow Jesus because we're engaged in the mission. That we're not just there to follow, but we have to do. So that is that is very good. Okay. Um, first of all, I thought it was really good. I thought you spoke, you know, you hurried it all along. You spoke in a nice, well paced tone. You didn't seem nervous at all. I also like your analogy about the family, about the children being sent out to college, leaving the family mm -hmm. just behind, and also about the sons leaving the help father, the work still has to be done, and everything. I can identify with that, you know, just being, you know, having family, being a parent, whatever. My kid just takes off and leaves, or whatever, you know, because yeah. he's too tall. But it also spoke to me about if Jesus asked me to leave and drop everything, he would just leave and go to him. You know, mm -hmm. that's a very challenging thought. Yeah, it's, it's also very good. Okay. Right? Mm -hmm. uh, the point you made about uh, those two sons just jumped out of the boat and leaving their father there. I've often thought about that too. Mm -hmm. And I'm ready to go. If I was their father, <laughs> 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 swinging the oar out of the boat. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. But aside from that, now, just you up there, your, your presentation, heart and mind. Uh, and Joe, I, I, I listened to you thinking that I could be tested on this, and I better listen. Okay. Yeah. I'm listening to Diane, and just, uh -huh. just listening to, you know, your mother talking to you, or somebody talking to you, and, and, and it was from the heart. It wasn't mm -hmm. in the same, same way, and it was listening to, you know, Totally two different ways of listening. There was ease of listening to Diane, whereas there was, you know, uh, there wasn't any ease. You know, Challenge. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know. Angela. 
very smooth, very just like soaking through. <coughs> and uh, both talking about the same gospel, but <coughs> saying a different, different way. But I came up with the same core main um, kind of idea in my mind. Joe was a ministry and yours was a mission. And after all, it's the same. So it's like, are they saying a different way, but they're concluding with the same theme. That's what I got, mission and, and uh, ministry and mission. Mike? Yours made me think, because when you talked about uh, how the uh, disciples or the, the parents that they left sacrificed for ministry, and what are we going to sacrifice? That's, that's what's left with me. What am I going to give up to do ministry? Because it does involve sacrifice, mm -hmm. which ties into what Joe says. We're not volunteers. Yeah. It's all ministry. And if we're going to do ministry, it may be we got to stay home from a party one day or something. So the, the sacrifice part of that really stuck with me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Jesse? Um, yeah, the, the message was great. Uh, with one gospel reading, um, there was a lot of messages that we heard, like uh, Angelica said, which is great, and the flow, the connection, and everything. I'm just not sure at the end, it seems like to me it was uh, quite a few landings, or a couple more. Uh, could be mistaken, but uh, it seems like you could have landed earlier than, and then went up again. And, Try to another attempt. So. Yeah. John? That's what I was waiting for. I wanted to. I was because I wanted to hear if there's anything that didn't work for anybody. Yeah, that was kind of weird. You know, it flowed beautifully and it went well. But I would say, and I thought of what Larry said earlier. It was long, and you need to boil it down a little bit, get more essence. Uh, it was the messages were wonderful, mm -hmm. but I'm thinking of your average parish church. Okay, this group will sit, we listen to you all day, yeah, not right. a problem, <laughs> but you got to think about the average parish church, you ran a, a, about 16 minutes, right. yeah, and I'm thinking about your average people who are going, and they'll, and they'll let go, but even though your message is great, so I guess the point I'm trying to make is, you both have great messages, see if you can lean it down a little bit more yeah. on both parts, the same thing as the message is great. But to boil it down a little bit, you know, knock about three, four, five minutes, four minutes off of it, maybe, and you'd be fine. Because, mm -hmm. you know, you want to try to keep a regular homily at maybe in between seven and nine minutes, if possible, because you think of the adult learning, adult attention span. Mm -hmm. If you have two of you, that'll kind of restart you a little bit, and you go a little bit longer, but you don't, if you run too long, you're going to run into the, you're going to run into the, I have, I have a time escape today. Yeah. And people get distracted and they'll let go. So I just, that was what I wanted to say is, and I think it really followed on a little bit what Jesse was saying, that uh, the messages were all good, people got a lot out of it. It's good. And this group has, will listen to everything, but I was trying to listen as a, as a parishioner. And um, I was sitting there thinking, okay, how long do we have to go? Does that include the proclamation? No, not including the proclamation. Yeah. I just, I just want you to be a little aware of that. I mean, it was probably, you know, I, I was kind of estimating a little bit. I, it kind of, I could be off by a couple of minutes, but it was pretty close. Because I looked, you started almost about 25 after, and it was, it was, uh, it was uh, 40. I'm looking at also at my watch, and it was uh, uh, 41 when we finished. And there was some things I could have cut out that, you know, I think, think we should have shared maybe a little earlier in the week than we did. Like I, I had also written back about the baptism mm -hmm. and the, sure. the desert, and I could have left that out. And I, and I heard the repeat. Yeah, that was, that was at the very beginning of yours, though. Yeah, yeah it was. That would be really She's exactly right. It was at the beginning. Yeah, I could have cut that out. So that's why you got. If you're going to do it together, make sure you're not repeating each other or yourself, right. and then you'll be fine. And I think if you probably look on through that a little bit mm -hmm. and taken some of that, glean that a little bit, it'd be great. Just boil it down a little bit, you'd be good. Because you don't want to lose, with well, the message as good as you guys had, you don't want to lose your people. Angela was so right about, about the ministry and the message. 
Yeah. And I like the team. Con I like the two of you doing it. I, I did too. Great. I thought it was wonderful. You complement each other very well. Yeah, we yeah. think differently. Because of the fact that you do think differently, and also because of the masculine and feminine aspects, mm -hmm. right. you know, you're going to bring out a different. You can have. You obviously can have the same theme. Mm -hmm. You know. But you brought it out, and you're going to always bring it out in different ways because you do. You're not just different people, but you're also a man and woman. Mm -hmm. So therefore, there is going to be a different perspective that, that you come from, and that's good because what Angela was talking about, you know, what you were saying, Diane. Um, initially, when she was saying, you know, you brought out a different perspective, and that's good because. We women, when we go to church, generally all we get is the male perspective. You know, so it's good to have a woman give a woman's perspective because you'll get most of your people out there are women. Yeah. <laughs> so you do need to get somebody who speaks to it speaks our language. You know, because it, uh, a woman will speak our perspective. So that's good. That's good. Mm -hmm. that's good. I would just also agree with John. If you if you're going to do it, combine it a little bit earlier so you can cut down. Yeah. Okay. So that's good. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.